how many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Monsieur de Richet, I am arresting you for the murder of Elizabeth Adams. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. But an act of horrific violence occurred during the night, and I do not know if this is linked to the disappearance of Sarah. If there's a possible link to my mother, I... I hope you'll let me know. In the early hours of the morning, Elizabeth Adams was found dead in her room, savagely mutilated with a knife. I'll get straight to the point, Louis. According to the initial elements at my disposal, you were the last person to see her alive. Yes, last night we... Uh... Do you suspect me? I want you to tell me everything that happened last night, and leave nothing out. Tell me, how did the evening begin? Duchess Hillsborough and I were returning to our rooms when Elizabeth came up to us. She was in a state of panic and insisted that she needed to speak to me. She said she feared for her life. I took my leave of the Duchess and followed Elizabeth to her room. Mm -hmm. Continue. She insisted we have a drink, without which she refused to confide anything. What exactly did she want to speak about? She claimed she saw my mother the previous evening on the cliff, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I will send someone as soon as possible. But do go on. I refused to go on drinking with her. She already seemed drunk and her conversation became confused. So, then she ordered me to get out. If only I'd stayed. Don't blame yourself, Louis. How could you have known? But thank you for this new information. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I understand. What do you intend to do? I must reassure my guests, and justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. H how would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and... His Eminence Piaggi. So, I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. 
Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest? Light water will give me a little reprieve. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. What a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. He's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Perrault. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No, no, I... Nothing special. I'd have thought this is not really the shortest way to get to your suite. Uh, yes, I, I wasn't really looking where I was going. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room.
blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. Let's see. No trace of sexual assault or rape. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. The direction the blood streaks caused by the wounds to the thorax show that she was standing when she lost blood. This proves that she was standing when she was assassinated. Possibly held by someone or something. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she... She must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck. Maybe mutilations. She bled from the nose. There are signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. A strange smell. Her breath it smells of alcohol and of laudanum. People use it to relieve pain. Laudanum. Certain courtiers use it to get drunk. If taken in large quantities, it can provoke fits of madness. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. The scars are superficial and were made several years ago. She wasn't trying to take her own life. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. She had the Sigillum de Ameth tattooed on her, the symbol of the living God. Written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age. Unless her mother was a tutor. Symbol of masons? What's that doing here? I count no fewer than... Nine wounds on the thorax, with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. The wounds are clean and look like they've been inflicted by a sharp object. Some of the lacerations have damaged vital organs, the heart, the right lung, which is perforated. Most of them weren't given with much force. She might even have survived. But the stab in the heart, though not all that deep, Sealed their fate. It looks as though the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle. As if... As if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of... What's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin. Probably during childhood. The scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. No wounds, but blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. Pinnacle's a trap. 
The wearers of the pinnacle thought that they were protected from evil by surrounding it inside the different circles of the pinnacle. No marks or bruising around the wrists. It doesn't look like she was tied up or held by force. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. Knocked over bottle of wine. I know that smell. It's laudanum. It must have been mixed with the wine directly in the bottle. Elizabeth served me last night. Still just as disgusting. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but it's undrinkable. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. The blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The handprint on the handle is really small. I can't imagine a man with a hand that size. It must be from a woman's hand. Blood spatter indicates that the murderer must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. Vials of laudanum. Large quantities could knock out a bull. Could Elizabeth have been drugged? If the body wounds are anything to go by, then clearly not. She put up a fierce fight. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. The color doesn't correspond to Emily's black outfits, and Elizabeth doesn't have anything quite like this in her wardrobe. Let's take a closer look. It's a little dirty. It must come from the bottom of the dress where it touches the ground. I recognize that moiré pattern. It's the same as the travel dress my mother was wearing when she left. But why the hell did she come into this room? A pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, fairly light. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded and well, there's no traces of gunshot residue. I'd conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Right. I shall have to find its owner. notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. 
a novel of the initiation of a young woman into polite society. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Contrary to what most people believe, a pentagram's not there to conjure up, I don't know, what evil or demonic creature. With the point toward the top, the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? Huh. The talisman that I gave back to Elizabeth. I can't exactly say it brought her good luck. Clock stopped at 354. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. Has Sam uh, finished with this room? Do you know who could have made such a mess of this room? Miss Adams, sir. We were given orders to leave the room as it was, so as not to rush her. Did she have a fight with someone to get the room into the state? Not that I know of, sir. Miss Adams would sometimes throw a tantrum, during which she would destroy anything that came to hand. Lord Mortimer told us not to enter the room. Thanks for that information. You are welcome, sir. Has Sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. President George Washington. A map of Vermont. A map of Massachusetts. Portrait of George Washington. A map of Connecticut. My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. Greetings, Lee. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know, Mr. President. I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Tell me, Mr. President, had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. 
Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Peru. But that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened. And I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. Yes, Lord Mortimer has a talent for healing, apparently. I'm not surprised Sir Gregory advised her to come. Agreed. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured, it looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. What can I do for you, Louis? I've come to see you about last night's tragedy. Did you hear anything about what happened to Elizabeth? Yes, we all did. Rumors spread quickly, you know. How awful. I didn't know her well, but I hope at least the poor thing didn't suffer too much. She didn't have time. I'm afraid Miss Adams was stabbed several times. Good God, what a tragedy. Do you know what happened exactly? In fact, Lord Mortimer has asked me to look into this case, Emily. Really? Are you Lord Mortimer's snoop now? I'm doing it for Elizabeth, not to please Mortimer. Good for you. Quite right, too. Have you found out anything? I'm now interviewing all the guests to establish the alibis for each person. Just so that I can cross you off the list of suspects, can you tell me what you were doing on the night of the murder? Am I given to understand that I'm on the list of suspects? Don't take it the wrong way, but I must consider every possibility. Well, if you absolutely wanted to be sure of my activities that evening, you only had to join me, you know. I know, Emily. Especially since I couldn't prevent the murder, even though I spent part of the evening with Elizabeth. You're... you're sure it's not too hard to bear for you? The fact is, I don't have a choice. But I will find the murderer. I owe Elizabeth that, at least. Did you and Elizabeth get to know each other? <sighs> I must admit, Louis, I... I didn't take much interest in her. I feel a bit guilty about it, but I never actually spoke to her. She seemed burdened by her problems, and as she wasn't invited to the conference, I didn't really seek her out. I found a torn piece of dress in Miss Adams' room. Grey silk. Where's it from? That's what I'm trying to find out. The color doesn't match any of Elizabeth's dresses, but I might not have found all of her clothes yet. Good Lord, Louia. I... do you realize what this means? If this piece of dress isn't from Elizabeth, then it's... I don't have any grey silk dresses, Louis. Neither does my sister, since we wear the same clothes. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to check with you. I'm so sorry, Louis. Thank you. Are you all right? You know, I'm sure there's a good reason why your mother was at the scene. 
Thank you, Emily. We've found the murder weapon. What is it? A dagger. Quite slim. Have you found its owner? Not yet. Still searching as it happens. That said, since a blade penetrated the body several times, the murderer's hand will have been covered in blood. Mm. You think that's a clue? The handprint was a very slender hand, Emily. Probably that of a woman. Do you realize what that means? There are only three of us on the island. Bearing in mind that neither my sister nor myself had any reason to set upon the young lady, that means... I know, Emily. I know. Keep up your courage, Louis. I'm sure there's an explanation. You're bound to shed some light on it all. If what you say is true, Emily, I'm less and less enthusiastic about shedding any light on the subject. I won't keep you, Emily. Thank you for answering my questions. See you, Louis. A devil's thorn to be used to uncover the best disguised traits. A letter from William Pitt the Elder addressed to Emily. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. Queen Charlotte. All the royal family of England is there from what I can tell. Two coils circle the lock. letter from William Pitt the Younger addressed to Emily. He's the present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Emily has indeed some powerful backers. Madam, thank you for consoling the Queen. The King's situation is worsening, but I wager he'll recover from this present fit. Next time you speak with Her Majesty the Queen, would you please be so kind as to ask her to look into my petition to raise taxes with the King? I will personally see to it that our nation will recover from this impasse. But King George's mental situation is slowing down our decision-taking. Thank you in advance for all your help. William Pitt, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. This is Thursday. Lady's Waldegrave by Reynolds, painted upon the request of the Waldegrave family in an effort to find them a husband. Displayed like meat, it's disgusting. Dear E, I received your last letter. Unfortunately, the Crown informed the Golden Order that our mission should under no circumstances hamper Sir Gregory's plans. Decidedly, they have support from the highest level in Buckingham Palace. So here we both are, Hands and feet tied, and little room to maneuver. Keep me abreast of events. Our mission is becoming more complicated. Yours, E. T.S. The French chapter of the Order doesn't appear to know anything about the arrival of our friend Sarah. I therefore cannot comment on it. However, my guess is that she has come here for personal reasons. Grammar of Port-Royal. Ah, the artistry of the French language and all its splendor. Whoever masters French commands the world. At least, une partie of it. King George III in coronation robes. 
Nice touch for the room of an English duchess. Tending children at the orphanage in Harlem. I find it a little hard to understand this painting choice. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. Just one holster in Bonaparte's gear, and the pistol is missing. On the other hand, his cleaning equipment is in mint condition. That's typical of the soldier in him. Hey, a Russian ruble. I wonder what it would be worth today. Monsieur de Richer, please be quick. We are both very busy. Did you hear about young Elizabeth? Indeed. It is deeply regrettable. Lord Mortimer asked me to... I know. You no doubt want to know my alibi. I spent the night downstairs playing cards. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah! And his eminence, Piaget, as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did any of you leave during the game? Not that I know of, monsieur. I didn't exactly spend my time noting the other guests' comings and goings, but I don't think so. Thank you. Can you tell me who was present at the game, please? Well, there were Lord Mortimer, President Washington, and Sir Gregory. Thank you. Ah, and his eminence, Piaget, as well. Excuse me, I nearly forgot him. Poor soul. Did you notice anything unusual during the evening? Nothing at all, except the luck of the devil of Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory at cards. Did they win much? Oh, la la, monsieur, they cleaned us out more like. But I plan on getting it all back before we leave. What time did the game end? I can't say exactly. As for me, I must have stayed until midnight. I was exhausted, couldn't think straight. So I preferred to go up to bed. On your way up to bed, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, not in the least. The whole manor was sound asleep. <laughs> not really, no. As any good soldier would, I imagine you own a firearm. May I see it? Oh, well, if you really want to, here is my pistol. Don't worry, it is not loaded. Do you have several of these? In Corsica, oui, but not on me when I am traveling. Only a bandit would carry such an arsenal. Thank you. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste, and I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. Someone saw you not far from the victim's room. Can you tell me what you were doing exactly, please? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. I wanted to warn her to be careful. You see, on the night of my arrival, I saw someone leaving her room in haste. And I wanted to speak to her, to warn her. Unfortunately, the young lady slipped through my fingers each time. Now I know why. She had every reason to be worried. What an idiot I was not to insist. I could have helped her. 
Were you able to recognize the Prowler? Unfortunately not, no. It was dark, and Lord Mortimer was waiting for me. I was not really paying attention anyway. Well, have we finished, monsieur? Exactly. Thanks again for all your answers. Good day. Jacques Perru. What do you want from me, De Richet? Greetings. It's fallen to me. Cut that... the crap! Get to the point. We both know why you're here. And have you got anything to tell me? What does it matter? It's too late anyway. Do what you have to do and get out. Records of the police. Notes intended for the police lieutenant of Paris. It's a list of people under surveillance in Paris. And there's some well-known names on it. This is valuable information. This shouldn't be lying around. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. I know you were at the scene. We will save a lot of time if you just tell me what happened. You know nothing at all. Enlighten me then. For now, I have your footprint in a pool of blood. That's right. The only thing you can prove is one of my boots was at the scene. Congratulations. You've wrapped up the investigation. All right. Have you finished? Not quite. I'd like you to answer a few questions. Two days ago, I surprised you having a go at Miss Adams. What happened? Did you want to give her another beating? She wouldn't let you push her around again, huh? Shut up, you little shit! You have no idea what happened, and here you are, carping away! You think you're investigator of the year. Have you taken a look at yourself, Dorishe? Didn't you get enough beating her black and blue the last time? I did not! Go on. Keep going. Finish what you came to do, then get out of my room. You were armed the night of my arrival. Can I see your weapon? No. You do realize you're not helping, don't you? You're making it worse for yourself. Let's get right to it. Are you a... Elizabeth Adams murderer? That is for you to prove, if I'm not mistaken, boy. You weren't expecting me to do all the legwork for you, were you? Lazy man. Two days ago, I surprised you having a go at Miss Adams. What happened? Did you want to give her another beating? She wouldn't let you push her around again, huh? Shut up, you little shit! You have no idea what happened, and here you are, carping away! You think you're investigator of the year. Have you taken a look at yourself, Dorishe? Didn't you get enough beating her black and blue the last time? I did not! Why? Nothing. Get away from me. Just as soon as you stop treating me like I'm an idiot. If you wanted people to think you were guilty, you couldn't have done any better. So cut the bullshit and come clean now. I can't! He'll come for revenge. Who? No one! Just shut your trap, goddammit! Yes, I was there. Yes, I walked in her blood. You've got all you need to wrap it up. Now scram!
Monsieur Johann von Wulner. The signs of obscurantism. The alchemist is a young man. The signs of the zodiac. A table of alchemical symbols. Someone circled the zinc symbol. The sorrows of young Werther. There's a handwritten text signed by Von Wonner on this first page. Dear Elizabeth, I know that this book is but a small token compared to the delightful moments you gave me, but I hope that this will nonetheless keep the memory alive. Your ever obedient servant. So, Wonner had a relationship with Elizabeth, but that's hardly surprising given his fondness for the occult. Chest locked with a four letter code, surely a word close to the owner's heart. The alchemist is an old man. Amber. What can I do for you, Duriche? Monsieur, Lord Mortimer has appointed me to investigate the tragedy that befell us last night. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Yes. How can I help, Monsieur? Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. Excuse me for asking, but did you know Miss Adams? Oh, she... Uh, not really, to tell the truth. No. I found the Werther dedication, signed by your hand, monsieur. Would you like to change your version now? Be careful, Duriche. Don't push your luck. My relationship with Miss Adams was pure and has nothing to do with you. Well, continue playing the detective as you see fit. But if I find the bastard who did that to Elizabeth, I will... Yes! I would have preferred a simple response, but I see I have my answer now. I get the impression that your romance was over. Am I right? So? What does it matter to you? I would never have attacked her, if that's what you're insinuating. Who put an end to the relationship? You or her? It was her. It was her. But what does that matter? We both agreed. You loved her, didn't you? That is none of your damn business. Your feelings betray you, sir. So what? Yes. I loved her like a moth loves the flame of a candle. That's why we could never be together. Where were you last night? In my room. I read a few ancient manuscripts before going to bed. But I didn't stay up long. I was tired. Thank you kindly. We finished. I'll have a look around and then take my leave. Do whatever you have to do.
The Nightmare Painted by Fusili in 1781. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. I'm sorry, my lord, but I don't have any evidence conclusive enough to allow me to name the culprit with certitude. Really? I see. Well, that's your decision, Louis, and I accept it. Given the distinguished guests and the sensitive political issues involved at the conference, I trust you'll leave me to conclude the case in my own way. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She isn't missing, you know. What? What, what do you mean? My mother has left traces in every nook and cranny of your island, my lord. She's definitely here. Now, what worries me most is why she doesn't show herself. Mm, that doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday. During lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see you. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris, we were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? He was called Von Brebe, if I remember rightly. Does that ring a bell? No. Not in the slightest. Sorry. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Her not coming back to the manor after so long makes me wonder if she is wary of someone. Well, certainly. But whom? The only ones who were present during her stay were Sir Gregory, Duchess Hillsborough, Mr. Von Bolder, and myself. You forget Elizabeth Adams, my lord. That's true. 
But Gregory and I arranged it so that they wouldn't run into each other. I, I thought it had worked. Do you think that your mother felt she was in danger because of Elizabeth? It's possible. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. Tell me. Tell me about her disappearance. Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma, Emily Hillsborough's twin sister. And she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's, it's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. Where, where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm. The room is just opposite Mortimer's study. Papers in the chimney. There's a legible fragment left. Hey, I recognize my mother's handwriting. She says we must find a safer way to communicate. Someone is on to us. Trust in my faith in the man with the sword. So mother had an accomplice here. Who could it be? Who could she be suspicious of? I must find the next part. Faith, sword. <laughs> I recognize her love of riddles there. Dante's Paradise. Raise your head and be reassured, for what comes up here from the mortal world must ripen in our rays. What is this disc? St. Paul on the road to Damascus by Caravaggio. A fierce opponent of the first Christians, St. Paul is suddenly struck by the call of Jesus Christ and converts. It's the best known conversion in Christian history, which teaches us that even enemies of Christ can be saved and even become his greatest apostles after finding faith. From what I can recall, the account of his conversion can be found in the epistles to the Galatians, the Philippians, the Corinthians, and the Acts of the Apostles. Caravaggio attained a magnificent command of black and the play of colors, too. Paul facing an ordeal, the curtains of his illusions being raised, and receives the light from his Savior.
door appears to be locked on the other side. I think I heard something fall to the ground. A metallic sound, like, like a key falling to the floor. We'll see if it works. It's open. A chest with the occult symbol representing air. A drawing of the Apostle Matthew, painted by Guido Rini. He's represented as writing the word of the Lord, transmitted by the Holy Spirit, who appears here in the guise of an angel. St. John is known as the youngest of Christ's apostles. Well, we often give credit to St. John for having written about the apocalypse in the last book of the Bible. St. John, painted by Guido Rini. Several portraits of apostles, all signed by Guido Rini. Looks like someone touched this commode recently. Their fingerprints on the sheets and in the dust. of St. Mark from the collection of the Apostles by Guido Rini. Amber Crystals. St. Paul painted by Guido Rini. Of the four Apostles shown in this piece, Paul is the only one who isn't an evangelist. He is the 13th Apostle. St. Paul is shown holding a sword. Strange. There's hardly any dust, as if the painting's been cleaned recently. There's a small inscription engraved on the frame. Let's take a closer look. This is how Paul spoke to his pilgrims from Rome. Just above that, someone's written down the figure 11 on the painting and underlined it twice. I don't know, what does that mean? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure maybe? So we have the figure 11 twice underlined and a story of a group of pilgrims who it looks like Paul is speaking to. Maybe it's a code. There, there must be a connection. A text on Paul must be somewhere, and it must be associated with the figure 11. But what's the story with these pilgrims? I mean, a connection with the figure, maybe? New Testament. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Oh, wait, a note from Mother is carefully folded between the pages here. What does it say? Dear E. I'm glad you found this note. I was afraid the code of the two groups of pilgrims would mislead you. Pick up the package. You know where, and hide it where no one will find it. It's imperative, awaiting your reply, hidden behind the youngest apostle. What? The youngest apostle? What does mother mean by that? Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, 
because ye go to law with one another. Why do ye not rather suffer injustice? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Ah, look, here's a message. It is of paramount importance that no one finds it. Watch out for the Prussian, he's on the trail. Let's meet up. I'll leave it to you to organize the rendezvous. Not today, I'm unable to do it. In the meantime, I'll follow the first group to Mark, who will reveal the answer to them. Prussian? Volner? I must have a word with him. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Here's a message. There are some complications. Indeed, the Prussian is insistent. What's happening at your end? Do you need help? If tonight is not possible, let's see tomorrow evening, in the south room, where we reviewed the situation. When Paul understood that only the axe counted, he went back on his tracks. I await your confirmation to his left, in the company of the pilgrims that have joined him. Yeah, this last comment is about their code. I should find new pilgrims near Paul. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten, but while they were made ready, he fell into a trance. Hey, there's a note here. A message from Mother in reply to E. We must leave urgently, but first I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare. Watch out for Volner. He figured out I was avoiding him. A lay suspicion. See you tomorrow evening. Stand ready. For now, let's cease all communication until we meet. Take care of yourself. I suppose this must be the last message. What happened afterward? If it's what I suspect, I, I fear the worst. What did Mother mean by, I absolutely must go beyond the nightmare? I must go beyond the nightmare. What does she mean by that? Clearly, she must be trying to do something useful, but, but what? The nightmare, does that remind me of anything? probably has to do with an object or something. Granting that this is the case, where might it be found? Yes, it's the painting that was behind Mortimer's study. Well, let's see if Mortimer has anything to hide behind his painting. Mortimer's getting his guests together I ought to join them so I don't look suspicious. and joined everyone in the small salon. You are expected in the small salon, sir. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look, I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. I was given to understand that my mother and your sister bonded during their stay. They kept up a secret correspondence, which makes me think they were suspicious of someone. And did you find out who it was? No, but von Volner is mentioned. They were 
planning to make a quick getaway, and we're looking to hide something beforehand. Have you got these messages? Yes. Go ahead, take a look. I see. I must say, uh, thanks for your honesty, Louis. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Emily, there's something else. Go on then. It's... it's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book, so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. How did you find out? Sir Gregory told me on my arrival. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. You will pay dearly, Peru. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel? What made you kick up such a farce? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if... It, uh, Gracious. It's not oh, the point. Paul. Hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later.
Uh, could you spare a moment, please, sir? I'm glad you ask. I want to talk to you, too. Of course. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Any news of her? Have you found her, maybe? To hear you speak, it sounds like you and my mother were close. Let's say I hold your mother in high esteem, yes. We were even planning to work together. That's what he was getting at. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Absolutely, but I was hoping that you could tell me more about it. Well, she was planning to sell me a very old book. I will make no secret of the fact that I am passionate about the subject. And when Sarah spoke to me about it, her account literally had me enthralled. <laughs> I can think of nothing else since. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? As my mother's got so many old books, uh, I'm afraid I won't be able oh, to... Oh, it's easy. You, you can't mistake this one. It's an ancient grimoire, composed of seven parts. Each one is closed under lock and key. It was made in such a way that if someone tried to tamper with it, the sheets would be permanently tarnished. If you find it, you mustn't tamper with it, you see? That, that's unusual. Unfortunately, that doesn't ring a bell. I'll look again, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. You seem very upset. Is it so important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh. And so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking for, Von Volner. You're the one who Von Birchert was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al-Azif have bitterly regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. It's Sir Gregory. Correct. You ought to know then, he is not a man who likes to be duped. You are walking on thin ice, sir. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Meaning? This gentleman enjoys people talking about him for too many reasons. His undeserved titles, more than ten in just four years, and each one more prestigious than the one before. You don't think he deserves them? If I had seen him on the battlefield, there might be some doubt. But that is not the case. 
The Queen would rather not risk losing him, so she consoles him with awards and titles. So you don't have a very positive opinion? His coveting French Catalonia does not encourage me to have one. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. I'm sure that a soldier such as yourself is not interested in vulgar rumors. Quite right. If only this cursed gossip didn't come to stain the uniform he has the audacity to wear. Don't you find him worthy? But how could he be, monsieur? He never sets foot on the battlefield. Too occupied with charming the queen. Have you any idea of the number of titles that coward has won in just a few years? No, not really. Ten! And that Don Juan spends the best part of his time under the queen's skirts. The bugger must have some hidden talent, given all of the gifts she gives him. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. There are some rumors about his loose morals. Just, monsieur. Add to that his devouring ambition, if you want my opinion. Playing at lover boy rather than gaining merit for his career? It's a disgrace for any soldier. I understand your point of view. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. You'll be able to check if the hearsay is true over these next few days. I sincerely doubt that. The context does not allow me to give him my trust. I understand your point of view. Would you have any more information about the comforts Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. What do you want, Louis? I have a question that might seem a bit strange, but... Go on. If I said, go beyond the nightmare, would that mean anything to you? Mm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? In the figurative sense, probably. I'm trying to understand what it refers to. Well, if I come up with anything, I'll let you know. What do you think of our last guest? Well, I never thought I would get the chance to meet that Hispanic Casanova in the flesh. His reputation is well known. The gentleman collects lovers, including, would you believe it, the Queen of Spain. The Queen of Spain likes to indiscreetly say, the King, Godoy, and myself make up the Holy Trinity. The people have appropriately renamed them the Goat, the Ruffian, and the Whore. <laughs> I didn't see you being a mudslinger in your idle hours, I must say. Emily, what can you tell me about the coming conference? Sir Gregory and Lord Mortimer organize this kind of high society meeting every so often in order to consider the world situation. But to what purpose? Well, by bringing together the most influential people from the dominant nations of the modern world, they allow the mighty to discuss matters with calm clarity. There are precedents of armistices being signed at the end of these talks, you know. Talking while holding a glass of brandy makes things easier. You'll see. You're leaving me? Unfortunately, I have things to do. Thank you again, madam.
Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I'm very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. What do you mean? The situation is ready to explode with France over Catalonia. Well, the Duke must have a darn good reason to be absent and come here, mustn't he? When Lord Mortimer invites you, Louis, you come. It's always in your best interest. I wouldn't say that personally, but... Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving. But you'll see. Everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed. Carmelite water will give me a little reprieve. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. Your Eminence, I haven't been following the case. I'm sure that the Order did everything in its power. Unfortunately, you know the situation in Paris, and... Well, it's chaotic at best. Anything can happen in those revolutionary tribunals. The King is the official representative of God on Earth, my son. Your Eminence, France has become a secular state. The King was just another citizen to them. He refused to admit his errors, looked down upon them, and attempted to escape. What did he expect? France has lost all reason, Louis. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I... well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character, at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the Church. You can believe me. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality. And I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, Your Eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves little doubt. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis.
there's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. So, what did my mother mean by going beyond the nightmare? The Book of the Mortimer Family. De Lance by Paul Rubens. It's a book on the history of the Crusades. I don't think it has any connection with my research. Hmm. It looks like a war painting. It's dated. It's a book on the history of the Crusades. I don't think it has any connection with my research. No, no, what have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. It's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. Let's take a closer look. These chocolates are probably a protocol gift. Everybody in Europe loves them nowadays. Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France, has her own personal chocolate maker at Versailles. They say it's her guilty little morning ritual before getting dressed. A cup with one sugar and some vanilla, if I remember rightly. I would be surprised if Mortimer has them delivered straight from South America. Touching by the shape, I'd say the Criollo cocoa beans. The chocolate of the Mayas. The rarest of the beans. Some even say they're an aphrodisiac. When a product is in fashion, people attribute all sorts of virtues to it. Not to be given to animals. Dark chocolate beans. Very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. That's what you generally feed birds. Hmm, might come in handy. A bird. Well, Waldo, is your master good? <laughs> I don't really know what I was expecting. 
Sarah Deriche? Waldo, you know Sarah? What? Repeat that, Waldo. Sarah. What about Sarah? Good God, what's been happening here? The nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. I just need to find out what she meant by go beyond. Hey, looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Aha, I found it. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great, that's all I needed. It's a complex mechanism. Hmm, looks like the third ring is a bit seized up. It gets stuck on number nine. Looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller. A painting depicting the Third Crusade. It's titled Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Acre. From what I know, the fall of Saint Jean d'Acre took place in the summer of 1191. Now, according to this title, it's winter time on the painting, so it can't have been late in the year of 1191. It must be in the first months of that year, probably in January or February of that year. The Siege of saint jean d'Acre was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. William Alexander Mortimer I, the twelfth month of Anna Lucis, 5,190. That's a funny date. The date's calculated in Anna Lucis. The twelfth month is February? So that makes, makes it February 1,191. Open sesame. Moreover, it shows a fair number of sea voyages being organized towards the American continent. <sighs> no doubt with slaves. How many men are broken in this trade? Tens of thousands each year, according to what people say. It shows the forces present in Africa. 
This is unexpected activity in this sector. It looks like there are also many unknowns, even for Mortimer. Weakness of the Human Psyche by Guillaume Trimor. Hmm. He says, It is possible to drill an idea into someone by constant daily repetition until the mind gives in. And goes on, There are hundreds of good ways to live life, but you only need one to convince the masses that it's the only one possible. <laughs> the author isn't letting any ethical principles get in his way, is he? Some of those forces are pushing toward the west. On it, Mortimer's placed little feather symbols at different points toward which the Spanish are headed. Could he be fueling Indian resistance to slow down Spain? This shows the forces present in America. Looks like a campaign is being prepared in France in favor of Italy. Could Mortimer have decided to finance a war? It shows the forces present in Europe. It's clear that France is surrounded by her enemies. However, a large number has been underlined in bold. 26 million. I know what it is. It's an estimation of my country's population. All our neighbors have far fewer inhabitants. Golden Elixir. looking map of the Orient indeed.
preservation using formaldehyde. Just as disgusting as ever. Something strange about this table. What kind of experiments does Mortimer carry out here? It's a dissection table. So Mortimer does autopsies here on his desert island. But who is he doing autopsies on then? The Little Surgeon's Perfect Collection. A skeleton by the name of Gustav, if the plaque on the plinth is anything to go by. Mortimer's given a name to his anatomy skeleton. <laughs> That's morbid. Oh, his right hand is missing. Strange. I don't recognize the alphabet. I wonder where the pictograms are from. It isn't Egyptian or Hebrew. There are two inscriptions on the sides as well as on the top. No way to know what's underneath. Absolutely no idea what it's for, but I find this cube fascinating. It looks like obsidian or onyx. It must weigh a ton. These are feathers. A pigeon, probably. Hmm, that must be for writing the hoeing pigeon messages. Look, a pack of tarot cards. Has he been reading the cards? Mortimer? <laughs> that would surprise me. It is a typical draw on a line that answers a specific question. To the left, temperance, that announces a reward for one who patiently waits before taking any action. And in the middle, the chariot, which symbolizes triumph and business success. To the right, the emperor evokes a future full of power and stability. Some goat skulls, chicken legs. Now we all know what that's for. I'm a little surprised at Mortimer. I didn't seem as the type to be organizing little pagan parties, invoking occult powers, and dancing naked under the full moon. I'm more used to seeing cheap charms like this sold by charlatans in Pré saint gervais Three rusty old nails. They're about 20 centimeters long. An iron mask. I wonder who it's for. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. A chest with a motif representing the alchemical symbol of fire. table of alchemical elements. So, Lord Mortimer also studies alchemy? It seems like he's interested in everything. Am I seeing things or is that an actual von Leeuwenhoek microscope? Incredible. Mortimer really is at the cutting edge of science. Even at the order, it took us ages to get one of those. This is my mother's writing. I've picked up her trail. What is she up to? Obviously, she wants to lure Mortimer somewhere, but... But where? 
The only clue she's left for Mortimer is his stone sword. It must be intentional. It looks like a decorative sword, like from a statue, for example. And judging by the state of it, I'm, I'm guessing it's been left outside for a long time. I have absolutely got to find out where it came from. Oh shit. How am I gonna get out of here now? Let's see what you've been hiding, Lord Murderer. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. These cylinders rotate on the same central axis, so when I enter a number on one side, it corresponds to another one on the other side. The mechanism passes through the wall. The wheels are the same on both sides. Chances are the combination I used on the other side works on this side too. It looks too easy. It could be a trap. Whoa, whoa. If the grid closes a bit more every time I enter a wrong date, I'd, I'd better not mess up again. It doesn't seem to be working. This looks like the same mechanism as the one on the other side. are stuck shit I'm cornered like a rat someone's coming Please don't let it be Mortimer. Who is it? Deliberately avoiding me. Four years ago I was his favorite. But nowadays I have to ask for an audience with his lordship. Damn it! It's Peru. I don't know if I should, but... Well, that's it. I've had enough of being humiliated. I'm wasting my time here. After everything I've done on his behalf, he dares treat me like a lackey? I've bled the Parisian elite for the sake of his whims, and what have I got to show for it? He doesn't even have the courtesy to give me five minutes of his time. I wanted to put my mind at ease. Well, that's done. I know what I've got to do now. I must find my mother. Uh, so much for discretion. Mr. Peru, it's me. Mr. De Riche, what the devil is going I on? need your help. Where are you, De Riche? Behind the painting. Open it, please. I've shut myself in. There's a pedal under Lord Mortimer's desk. Can you see it? There's no... Hang on. Yes. Good. Now press it. Yeah, yeah. Done. You should see something resembling a frame with numbers. Yes? You have to turn them to set the combination. One, one, nine, one. Well, well, well. Poking our nose into Mortimer's little secrets, are we? You do surprise me. It's not what you're thinking. 
I'll explain everything. No, you will not, sir. It has nothing to do with me, and by the way, I never even saw you. So, I'll be on my way now. Thanks again. You had me trapped. Why not say anything? I would have wanted someone to open the door for me, too. And while it's too late for me, it may not be for you. I don't understand. I... Yeah. Goodbye. I've wasted enough time. I better get moving if I want to find my mother. This note is about a meeting with Lord Mortimer. There's no doubt about it. All right, I need to find out where the sword that came with it's from in order to find Mother. You're choking, I hope. Don't tell me you've done that. Really? How do you expect me to guess? Well, for God's sake, just ask them. We must absolutely inform Sir Gregory. How long has he been trying to collect all the spears? I must have brought him the first one twenty odd years ago. Do you know if he has managed to get the original? Well, in any case, he's got all the ones we had at the Vatican. He made me replace them with copies. But I don't understand your reaction. I'm sure it is nothing serious. Uh -huh. I can see very well you do not understand. You have done nothing less than sign our death warrants, and still you don't understand. I... Someone is listening. What? Monsieur de Richet, why not join us rather than find yourself eavesdropping? Well, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I'm sorry. Of course you didn't. So, my son, what can we do for you? I didn't mean to spy on you, but you caught my attention. Have you brought spears as well, then? What? Did Mortimer ask you to bring him holy spears, too? Yes, but I thought I was the only one. How many of them have you brought, then? Eighteen, you know. Any relic even remotely to do with them, in fact. Eighteen spears? How many of them exist in all? No one knows. Especially, as there is only one authentic one, of course. That all adds to the mystery, don't you think? Well, uh, please leave us, monsieur. His eminence and I wish to finish our discussion alone. Leave us now. Is everything all right, my young friend? Mr. President, you might be able to help me. I'd like to know where that sword comes from. Any idea? Hmm. It reminds me of the statues in the garden. I can't guarantee it, but you ought to go and see. You never know, do you? Thank you, Mr. President. You're quite welcome. See you soon.
I am sorry, sir, but the conference room is under preparation and is consequently inaccessible to guests. The sword probably came from this garden, but what could it have been used for? Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Golden elixir. Well, Monsieur de Richet, what brings you here? To tell the truth, I was wondering the same thing about you. It's rare for guests to wander about in the garden. I wanted to be alone for five minutes. You look worried. Worried? No. Resolved would be a more exact term. Resolved to do what? What's the point in answering? You wouldn't believe me anyway. I'll be leaving now because whatever it is you're up to, I do not want to know. Be seeing you. Tell me, aren't you even curious? Curiosity killed a cat, Monsieur de Richet. I admit, I may have judged you wrongly. Watching you seek out Mortimer's little secrets might even be amusing if I didn't already know the consequences. See you later. What happened to you, Monsieur? It's time for me to assume the consequences of my choices. I've sold my soul to the devil. Now it's time to pay. Ariadne. In Greek mythology, she helped Theseus get through the labyrinth. Hmm. Looks like there's a crack in the region of the heart. I guide this sword that would kill the monster. If I recall the Iliad, Ariadne is none other than the daughter of Minos and Pasiphae. She was in love with Theseus and helped him in his quest to kill the Minotaur in return for a promise of marriage, if he defeated the monster. She gave him a reel of thread so that he could find his way back through the labyrinth, which was famous for being unsolvable. But once the beast was slain, the gallant was quick to abandon her on an island. Turns out heroes are not what they once were. Icarus. The son of Daedalus and Nocrate. Impossible to mistake him with those wings. After flying too close to the sun, they came unstuck and he fell to his death. <laughs> Pity. I am the innocent one, sacrificed for the sins of the father. If I remember rightly, Icarus was the son of Daedalus. He found himself confined to the labyrinth with his father after his father betrayed Minos. And his father's plan to escape from the labyrinth wasn't any more successful. Man, that kid was jinxed. Hey, there's no crack here. Well, let's keep going. Theseus, son of Aegeus, he's the one who slayed the Minotaur. Wrongly positioned, I am the blind hero. Hmm, I wasn't expecting an inscription like that. I seem to recall he took the decision to confront the Minotaur. He killed the beast, but if it weren't for Ariadne's help, he would have been trapped in that labyrinth forever. In short, yet another hero who wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm probably being a bit harsh. I mean, we do owe him the foundations of Athens. In other words, the Republic. Render therefore unto Caesar what is Caesar's. 
I wonder if Mother managed to solve this enigma. Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. Asterion. It is rare to see him like this. In general, he's represented with the head of a bull, with the features of the Minotaur. The famous son of Minos and Pasiphae. I am the cursed child. Asterion was the son of Pasiphae and Minos, or rather the result of a curse put on Minos. Minos was punished for betraying Poseidon. Of course, as strangely it often happens, it wasn't he who was punished, it was his wife. She had to mate with a bull, no less. From that union, Asterion was born, who everyone knows as the famous Minotaur. Rejected by Minos, he was shut up in the labyrinth so he could never leave. And, as if that wasn't bad enough, he died by the hand of a hero desperate to restore his reputation. Technically, Asterion is the victim of the story because he's described as a child cast out from birth. Born from an extramarital union because of the errors of his father, he was treated as an outcast all his life. And he died as innocently as he was born. A tragic story, as the Greeks knew how to do so well. Let's go. Minos. Son of Zeus and Europa. If I remember correctly, he was the king of Crete. Married to Pasiphae, he had many children, including the famous Ariadne, whom history remembers for her thread. Hey, there's a crack in that statue. His gesture sealed his fate. In mythology, King Minos was known as a wise and just king, despite the fact that he deceived Poseidon. As punishment, his country was devastated by the white bull of the sea god, and his wife became passionately in love with it. From their union, Asterion was born, sadly known to us as the Minotaur. The illegitimate child, the child of shame, who had a sorry fate. And to think that Minos ended up as a judge of the underworld. Decidedly, the high and mighty always managed to get away with it. The crack is in the region of the heart. It's a thin crack as long as a finger, a blade could easily enter. Daedalus. He's the architect of the labyrinth, and if I'm not mistaken, he's also the father of Icarus. Architect and genius inventor, he built the labyrinth for Minos to imprison the Minotaur. I seem to recall that he told Ariadne how to get out of the labyrinth by tying a thread to himself. So, Theseus managed to exit the labyrinth without trouble once the beast was dead. And when Minos found him, he threw him into his own labyrinth, along with his son Icarus. Every action causes a reaction. I am the architect of my own demise. Pasiphae. Daughter of Perseus and sister of Circe, she married Minos and became the queen of Crete. Deliverance alone suffices not to wash away my humiliation. I seem to recall that her fate was not something you'd want. She was punished for the sins of her husband. She had to mate with the sacred bull of Poseidon. Nine months later, she gave birth to Asterion, better known as the Minotaur. <laughs> It's crazy to see to what extent women have always been mistreated. When they're not harpies, gorgons, and other witches, they become victims. She has no cracks. All right, well, let's continue anyways. 
I wonder what this kiosk is doing in the middle of the garden. Too cramped to be able to do much. Well, there must be something going on there. What is that? Looks like a sort of opening mechanism. Knowing Mortimer, I bet it's booby-trapped. There's a little hole in, at the fingers. I'm pretty sure if I get it wrong, I'll, I'll get pricked. Damn you, Mortimer. Reminds me of traps I studied in Egyptian tombs. Again? I... You can't be serious, Manuel. You know that's not going to happen. You must leave me alone now. I have agreed to everything. Even to... Agreed? I wasn't aware you had a choice. What's going on here? I... What now? What else must I do to win back my freedom? Obey me. Now get out! <gasps> what was that? That's the third time in three days. See if you're you're in there, mother. A fragment of amber. Bandages. Hmm. Someone's been patching themselves up. Looks like my mother took advantage of being in hiding to change her bandages, huh? This is silk. She must have used her own clothes. These bandages are pretty basic. She'll be lucky if she doesn't get an infection. Hmm. There are patches where the blood isn't totally clotted. That's a good sign, right? She changed them recently. Which proves she's still looking after herself and still believes in her chances. Well, I'd love to tell her to keep hanging in there. A ruble. Mother, now what's happened? <gasps> 